Body hair transplantation to head? I am a victim of androgenic alopecia. It's been three years since I've seen myself with hair. I'm planning for a hair transplant in a year. I have heard that body hair transplantation to head is being done in a few cases. So, how successful is that? And can I go for it rather than going for a follicular unit extraction or follicular unit transplant? Thank you for your question. You have uh, submitted some very good photos and you clearly understand that you have androgenetic alopecia or male pattern hair loss. And that you're asking about body hair transplantation as an alternative to FUE and FUT. Well, since you submitted this question, I'm going to share with you my perspective on both your question, but also my approach to people like yourself who come to our practice. And I think that you're going to learn something that is different from what you have been coming across in your research. You see, hair loss, male pattern hair loss, is one of the most common issues for men. And there's a rule of decades where men in their 30s, about 30% have male pattern hair loss, men in their 50s, 50%. And when you are younger, even if you're in the minority of the 20%, you, you are affected. And, and if your contemporaries, 80% of whom have hair or 70%, it certainly can be a tremendously um, a, 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 a devastating effect on your, on your perception of yourself. Now, from your question, you have done a lot of research and you've learned about transplantation. Well, in our practice, we have patients who come to us from all over the world for a treatment that we call hair regeneration. And I'll, I'll teach you a little bit about it. And it's, it, it's detailed. At the same time, there's an opportunity, I think, that will help you. You see, male pattern hair loss has basically two FDA-approved options. One is Rogaine or minoxidil, which is a topical, and the other is finasteride. Now, briefly, minoxidil appears to improve the appearance of the scalp in patients with male pattern hair loss. I think it's more for men who have more of a crown, diffuse hair loss that's slow, that happens in the later ages, as opposed to younger men who lose hair from the front and have a frontal recession. But it will not reverse male pattern hair loss. It is, appears that minoxidil prolongs the growth cycle of a hair follicle, so more hair is on your scalp at any given time. Now, finasteride is a remarkable drug that inhibits an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Now this enzyme is, is a critical enzyme that converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Now there are hair follicles that are susceptible to the effects of dihydrotestosterone which then become thin. So the strategy is, is that if you take finasteride, you will reduce the dihydrotestosterone and allow those thinning hairs to become thicker. Now there is a lot of unfortunately concerns about the long-term sexual side effects of finasteride. And interestingly in our practice, we've been prescribing finasteride for men since 97, 98, and we have men in their 50s and 60s who are continuously taking finasteride and are fine while younger men are coming to us in their 20s and 30s and are scared to death about taking finasteride and we won't prescribe it. Well, we have been doing a lot of work in the clinical application of a wound healing material called extracellular matrix that when injected under the skin with, our, with a method that I've developed over the past two years that 
is be able to generate and restore thinning hair to thicker hair in patients who, with or without taking finasteride. In fact, we have so many patients who don't take finasteride, and we have many patients who take finasteride and still lose hair who have responded dramatically to hair regeneration. I've spent a lot of time reviewing the basic science medical literature about the knowledge about the hair follicle. And the hair follicle is so complex. It's been described as a mini organ and or as a zoo of stem cells. And this is unfortunately what has frustrated so many basic science researchers. So many of our patients have come to us who are, have had progressive hair loss and have had transplant after transplant. And they've said that 20, 30 years ago, they were told that hair cloning is just around the corner. And that just around the corner has been going on up to recent history. And I, I, I sympathize so much with the researchers who have been doing remarkable work. And I have synthesized a rationale that I believe is the basis for why clinically we've been successful in doing, I think, more with a wound healing material that any biotech company appears to have been able to do with the isolation of different factors. If you look at the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, you're going to see that there are always these new reports of little steps that have big impacts on the research related to hair follicles and the ability to grow hair follicles in the laboratory. But I think that it's kind of like a puzzle. And this puzzle that initially maybe researchers believed had a thousand pieces turns out to have more like 10,000 pieces. And the human body is so complex that there are so many cells and signals that I think have yet to be revealed that the complexity of restoring thinning hair from a stem cell perspective is um, something that only the body can do itself as opposed to a company. And to, to further elaborate before I go into the details of extracellular matrix, when a company finds, or when a researcher finds a particular growth factor, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of hype. And different investors will, will buy the rights to that particular factor. Then they'll do phase one, phase two, phase three trials. And maybe they'll get some improvement. But unfortunately, Wall Street creates a lot of hype and it creates incredible valuations to stock prices, but it does not clinically result in things that can help people today or within the next few years. We have been so fortunate to find through the almost accidental discovery of reversal of hair thinning using extracellular matrix that we've been able to currently treat people with male and female pattern hair loss using a very specific method that I developed where essentially we're combining extracellular matrix which is derived from the urinary bladder of pigs. And although it's derived from pigs, it's because pigs are commercially available, it has nothing pig about it when it is applied. So even people with religious issues have been able to take this a treatment because the material has, is so devoid of any specific pig proteins or characteristics that it, it, it has what's called xenogenic transferability where it can go to any species, uh, any mammalian species. So it's been used in veterinary medicine and it's been tremendously used in human medicine. This material heals by duplication. And unfortunately, the word duplication has confused a lot of people, and I'll elaborate further. The material heals by restoring tissue, by duplicating tissue. 
For example, if it's placed on injured muscle, you'll get muscle. If it's placed on injured skin, you'll get skin. Now, early on, it was interpreted that maybe it was responsible for hair cloning. There is no hair cloning. What it, is, what it is doing, what it appears to be doing, is restoring the critical stem cells that are needed to restore the critical stem cells and signals between the dermal papilla and the progenitor cells in the hair follicle, which will restore hair to go from thinning to back to thicker. In fact, our patients not only get back their hair that's thinning, but the hair comes back not gray, but darker, as if, it was, as if they were younger. So hair regeneration is something that you should strongly learn about in order to consider your strategy. To address your question specifically, to go as far as body hair transplantation, in my practice, I would probably first treat you with the injection and I would see how much of your, your natural hair comes back. Now, it's not a perfect solution. The thinner the hair, the hair will come back thicker, but it won't be as thick necessarily as the hairs that are only slightly thinner. When we look at the crown of a man that we treat, the fringe of the crown, it's almost like an iris. It gets thicker, thicker, but it doesn't go all the way to the center, but certainly, the whole area gets a lot thicker. It's, it's quite dramatic and, and, and awe-inspiring from my opinion. So you might want to consider uh, this pr procedure first before you then consider any transplantation. Looking at your pictures, you've, cut, you've buzzed your hair very short. You may be pleased with the results of this alone. I would advise against body hair transplantation because you need a lot of grafts to cover any given area. If you think about it, when you were at your peak, you had 100,000 hairs. And when you first notice hair loss, you lose about half of those hairs. In a given transplantation, typically you're going to move no more than 1,000 to 2,000 hairs. So you have to be very strategic about where you place those hairs. So understanding that, I would like you to learn more about the hair regeneration, extracellular matrix, A-cell, stem cell technologies, and learn more about this as an option. And then have a consultation with doctors experienced in this area and learn about your options before you move forward with a transplantation because you have to think about the future and the progression of your hair loss when you do a transplant. A transplant occurs and will benefit most people for several years, but you don't have an endless supply of donor area. So think about all that. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.